this video, I'll show you how to do forecasting in Microsoft Power BI desktop. Now, forecasting is basically predicting in advance what will happen in the future. So I'm in Power BI desktop. Now we're 2024 version. I have a simple financial table. What I'm going to do, I will be making use of a line chart. So this is a line chart visual. Let me expand this. And here I'm going to use on the X axis, the date. So I have a date column. So I'll pick up date and instead of the date hierarchy, I'll just pick up date. Y axis, I'm going to pick whatever numeric value which I have. So in my case, I will be making use of uh, either gross sales or a uh, say units sold or any other numeric value. So let me pick up uh, sales. So in Y axis, I'll pick up sales. And this is how the sale has been done from September 2013 till November 2014. Now, if I want to do some forecasting on this, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll be clicking on this icon. It says add further visual analysis to your visual. So I'll just click on that. And from here, you have an option to either select forecast or anomalies. Now, let me pick up anomalies first over here. So if I pick up anomaly, then I cannot select forecast. OK, so it's either or all. So let me turn this off and I'll turn the forecast on. The moment I turn the forecast on, it has given me some uh, data uh, telling me where the trend line is approaching. So the trend line is basically, this is where the trend line is. And it says around uh, $8 million is what is being forecasted depending on the data which has been provided to it. Now from a visual perspective, we can do some things. If you select forecast, you have an option. So you have this units as points. So you can uh, select forecasting what you want to unit uh, as. Now, as you see over here, it's just like a couple of years record. So uh, it's better to do forecasting from a month perspective from this record. So I'll select months and I'll say, I want the forecast length for the next three months. Okay, so if I just type in three and click on apply, then as you see over here, it has forecasted from uh, December 2014. Then it is forecasted for Jan. It has forecasted for Feb. It is forecasted for March. Similarly, I can increase the length. I'll say I want to forecast it for next five months and then it will forecast accordingly. What if I want to ignore some of the older records? Say if I want to ignore a couple of month record, I can go ahead and do that. I'll say ignore the last uh, one month okay so it is starting from september 2013 so i'll just say ignore the last one month and uh i can put a seasonality i can put confidence interval etc now as you see over here this apply button is not enabled now why because your your data is not sufficient for forecasting so if i just say forecast length for the next two months and i'll just say ignore the last zero month i'll click on apply Okay, and then it will forecast set for, forecast for the next five months. If I put any value over here, so I'll say ignore the last two months. It will not allow me to proceed further because it has a lesser amount of data over here, right? Uh, now, similarly, I have an, another visual over here for adventure work sales. As you see over here, this has got a lot of data. So I'll just say click on forecast. I'll turn on the forecast for this particular visual. Now, as you see over here, the it has already forecasted but then this is uh uh like because of the vastness of data within this system i'm not able to visualize it correctly right now for that what you can do is if you go here you can just say i want to focus not from a date but from a date hierarchy perspective and then you can drill down further so i'm just drilling down okay and as you see over, this is quarter, this is month, this is uh, the day, uh, which really doesn't make sense. Uh, and if I again turn on or turn off, I can go up. And this is how I can drill down on basis of this. Now, as you see over here, this is a perfect record because this is showing me year and year on year basis, how it is being forecasted. So if I go into visualizations over here, go to forecast and I say, I want to uh predict for the next uh four quarters which is equivalent to one year and i'll just say ignore the one quarter i click on apply 
And then as you see over here, it has ignored one quarter. Now it is starting from July, 2017. Now, if I would have just put zero over here, then, uh, and I say forecast for the next, hmm, maybe six months, okay? I can go ahead and make that changes in my visual and then, you know, like I can get this uh, sorted out. Now there is a confidence interval, as you see over here, I can set confidence interval as 85, 95%, depending on how you want that uh, confidence interval to be set. Now, depending on that, as you see over here, the visual has shrinked and expanded. So if I put as 95 uh, and then made some changes, then it would have been uh, collapsed, right? So these are the options which are available from a forecast setting perspective now let me go back to the previous visual now this is a previous visual with lesser amount of data now if you see there is something called as a forecast line now i can play around with the line color so if i make it red so as you see over here this entire area becomes red uh, transparency line style is solid now this line style is solid i can make it dashed i can make it dotted or custom okay now this is the number which i can put over here so if i can put it as 13 now this is how it will put that dash array, right? So let me keep it as dashed for a moment. I can increase the width size, so I can make it one pixel, two pixel, five pixel, or maybe scale by the width record, okay? So I can even do that. I can match the series interpolation, okay? So if the interpolation is uh, of type linear or smooth, now this is linear, watch what happens when I make it smooth. It will give that curvature kind of a look. So that's the smooth interpolation which I kept. And within smooth, you have a smooth type of monotone and cardinal. Uh, and then you have a step. So you can even use interpolation type as step. So let me keep it as smooth for a moment. Uh, and then what are the tensions which you need to set? Like is it set at 50% or 80% or 100% depending on how you want to set your parameter. And then accordingly, you can set those values confidence line now as you see over here this confidence lines is turned off if i turn this on this is the confidence line as you see over here and then from here confidence line i can uh, set the transparency color i can i can put a line style as solid or dotted or custom so if i put dotted this is that confidence this this entire filled block uh, it is sh now showing in dotted now if i put it as dashed you see over here it has put it in dash uh, and then I can set the transparency accordingly. So as you see over here, this is the confidence line. So I put it as dotted back. I can set the width. So I can set this width. So this width will increase accordingly. And I have this something called as a confidence shape. Now this confidence uh, shape over here, this color is red. I'll make it blue and I'll set the transparency as, you know, uh, some some value uh, and then i have an option to set the tooltip color as well now this confident shape color this is where this confidence goes uh confidence lines goes uh, i can even set a forecast title now as you see over here it is showing forecast one right so i can say hey this is being forecasted for jan 2024 2015 so maybe i'll just say forecast 2015 and then i can set the uh the forecast uh, tool tip right forecast 2015 as you see over here so this is how you basically do a forecasting there are multiple options which are available through which you can do a forecasting of the data make sure that you have sufficient data now for this visual i have a very few data like two years data and then if you are predicting it for like years or so it will not give you that correct result or it will not even allow you to make that changes so if you go to forecast over here now, if I say I want to predict for the next five months and I'll say ignore the last uh, 18 months, it really doesn't make sense because again, you are shrinking out the data. And if you click on apply, uh, it will not give you that result. Now, how will you come to know that it has not given you the result because you, you have just two years of record. You're telling that forecast length is five months, but you are ignoring the last 18 month record. This is not correct. So if you see this X icon over here, it says we need more data click to see details okay so forecasting requires at least two valid time or value data points so that means i'll just say if i want to forecast for the next three months and if i do not want to ignore any record or i'll just say i just want to ignore one month of record click on apply it will work perfectly fine so make sure that you are giving correct 
and uh, precise information to the engine so that the forecasting happens in a uh, proper manner. So this is how you basically do forecasting in Power BI. Thanks for watching.